All right, we have a cylinder four injector dead. Get the air cleaner out of the way. And get the valve covers out. Okay, it's one valve cover. Yeah, remove this valve cover, the Jake housing, which is this one, this one, and that bolt, these two wires. Throw them off to the side. So. This off one, there we go. Jump down, get rid of those. Dang, I got it all right the first time. Two 18s and a 16. Okay, these are just nuts. And that's a bolt. Let's take the bolt out first. Very important to keep everything in order here. I got a magnetic tray over here. Okay, they're tighter, much tighter. These I think are, if I remember right, when I did the head, 75 foot pounds plus or minus 15 or something like that. I have the book. important to have a good grip keep wiping your hands so you don't drop the nuts down the fucking hole working on these wires sure if these are directional or not but I always put a paint mark on one and then where it was going to just so it doesn't confuse it but I don't think these matter but it's good practice get those tucked out of the way Jake housing should come right off there's your Jake housing oh. so this is the injector I'm going after, and it has a little cap on there with two nuts, they're 9, 30 seconds. I already had this on and off because I was testing said injector. It's got power, it was sparking here, it's just not firing. So, next is the rocker assembly, which is going to be this one, and this one here. I think they're 18 as well. Yep. And it's very important to remember where the stud goes because that's what holds down the, the shaft. Also, push rods, you want to keep them in the same exact spot. Otherwise, you're going to have to do the valve lash all over again, and that's a whole process. So, keep them in the same exact spot. We're going to break this one loose. I might have to get a longer one or a wrench. Yeah, I'm gonna go find a longer socket. 19 feels on it.
Yep, there's three grooves on there. That's where oil passes through there to go to the Jake brick. The nuts holding the Jake down did not have those three grooves or serrations in there. So this is pretty much loose. I'm just gonna take this bolt out of there. You might want to look down there, take note of where exactly the uh, push rod sit. The middle one is always the bigger one for the injector. Fires it there. That's where you're going to make our adjustment later on the inje injector. Okay, let's cover the oil. Push rod already fell out of there. Might be a pain in the butt to get them back on there, but to get them started. But it's just something you're gonna have to do. That's the whole rocker assembly. I make note and don't drop these bridges. This one right here. And this one right there. They gotta go back exactly how they were. It's also nice to film this so I could remember where they go. Is there a drain on this fuel rail? That's the next question. Okay. This is the unit injector. These are the two nuts that you take the connector off of. This is what fires the big injector. You can take these push rods out of there or not. Just make sure they don't get mixed up this is uh, the hold down bolt spacer and the hold down uh, the hold down is like a fork it has to come out in and out with the injector you will not be able to slip it in and out with it and then when you install this you're gonna push on the spring not on here so I'm gonna try and drain the fuel rail there should be a plug on there somewhere not the bolts holding it this way there's gonna be a plug you see my finger back here. I'm gonna try and drain it, and then uh, we'll get back to that. Okay, 13 millimeter on the hold down. Again, put that somewhere safe. Okay, this should make the job easier. It's OTC indexing pry bars. The little foot is adjustable. You could do it with something else. You gotta get underneath the hold down. And just rock her up. Injectors out. Some leak fuel should anyways and this is it so hold down comes off it's gonna go into the next one the best bet is to um, vacuum out any fluid out of the cylinder blow it out any fluid in the cylinder could potentially cause a hydrolock situation um, on a motor that you're trying to fix and put back together, so it's definitely not good. Also, I'm gonna take a peek down the bores and try and clean them up. Very, very important to clean the bores. So, gonna clean the bore, get all the fluid out of there, make sure oil doesn't go down there, because once again, fluid will hydrolock the motor, and then we'll be back to reinstall the injector. Okay, final inspection. Pistons at the top, there's no fluid in there. I cleaned the bore. I have a picture, I'll try to insert it. Of what it's supposed to look like, it wasn't very hard to clean, um, especially since this is a brand new cylinder head. And there's maybe uh, 50,000 miles on these injectors. Well, not on the injectors, on the, on the head itself. 
they've only been in there. The, I don't want to say the original injectors because a couple of them have been replaced. You take some oil, spread it in the bore. Don't go excessive, too much in there. It's not good. As much as you can. Put the rest on the injector. But they haven't been there that long. It was easy enough to clean. I'll grab the injector. This is the injector. The hold down goes like that. I wipe this down so it's easier. I'm going to... You see that? This came, this injector came with uh, O-rings. I went and got cat OEM ones. So I just trust them a little bit more. Not too much more. I'll put the part numbers to the O-rings in there in case your injectors don't come with them. I'm doing this by the book. I have the cat book in there. It says lubricate with oil and a lubricant mix. All you need is a little bit of oil. You cannot reuse these O-rings. Otherwise you will have many, many, many problems. I lubricated them putting them on. I'm just trying to be as thorough as possible. The I mean, they're not cheap, but they're not, the rings are not cheap, but they're also not very expensive. It's just more of annoying if you destroy them. I, I bought an extra one just in case, anyways. It's tip, very fragile. Has to go straight down. This has to go with it. don't want to clang and bang down the sides. Okay, that went down. Now we gotta push it down on the spring, not on there. And give her a little bit more oomph. It's not in all the way. We're gonna use the hold down to tighten her down. So we're gonna go grab that spacer and bolt. Give her a good wipe down. A little bit of oil underneath there. Gives it a good torque reading. And there. Don't need much. Careful so you don't drop it down the hole where it's not supposed to go. Thirteen. Hand tight, start the threads. I'm gonna use this ratchet to pull it down a little bit. It's 22 foot pounds. Make it nice and easy. Just gonna seat the injector. I can see it going down. You don't want it to be fighting you. Oh yeah. Just push her down nice and easy. To watch it working. You can see the orange o-ring just doop, going down nice and smooth on this. Okay, I'm not going too tight. Like I said, we got to torque it. So I'll get the torque wrench ready. I'll do that. It's 22 foot pounds. Um, clean this up a little bit. And then I'll get the cap, toss that on. It's 9 30 second nuts. It's a good time to do it. Just like that. Simple enough. And then we're gonna torque that, install the bridges exactly how they were, and uh, we're gonna get the rocker assembly back in here, and then we're gonna 
work with the push rods because it might be a little wiggling the push rods to get them the ends of the rockers go into the top of the push rods you want to make sure they're in the same spots we won't have to adjust the valves ideally but we will have to adjust the injector height uh, the middle rocker so I'm gonna do this I think it's 22 inch pounds but you know it's kind of a tight tight don't over tighten it kind of thing and uh, 22 foot pounds and we're gonna work on setting that up the rocker We got those bridges on, the injector's tight. Okay. The push rods are in the way. I'm trying to slide down that shaft. Okay, those are lined up, but they'll probably move again. Wipe my hands, grab the bolt, and then up the serrations. Keep your hand. Oh, I'm falling. Might want to keep your hand on the rockers to keep them from falling. The push rods from falling out of there, I should say. And then I think that's a 19. Let me uh, speed this up. That's how I'm going to speed it up like that. Before you get carried away, grab my flashlight. You can see that the tops are in place. Well, I just knocked the one out. Let me make sure the push rods are where they belong on the bottom. Yep, 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 yep. Cut this off. Look for the torque on that. Torque them. Just want to be short. It's a little cold out here too. I'm gonna warm my fingers up. Okay, so I, don't, I was gonna get my other camera, but I'm just brushing up on this myself. This is to adjust the unit injector. So put the number one piston on top dead center. The compression stroke. It says to refer to this, so I'll just screenshot that so you, uh, so I don't read it to you. And then that's all the information. Um, when it's on the right stroke, it tells you which cylinders can be adjusted, and uh, turn the screw 180 degrees, lock it down. Um, so I'll just show you this quick.
and that. So you'll need a cat turning tool. It'll go into the back of the flywheel. So like the, the transmission starts here, the front of the motor is this way, the turning tool will go in there, takes a half inch ratchet, and you'll turn it that way. Would be counterclockwise from the flywheel. So the flywheel would be on this side, that would be counterclockwise. And so the passenger wheel would be here on the truck and you would turn the ratchet upwards and that would turn the motor clockwise or counterclockwise looking at it from the flywheel is what they're asking for. And then right above that, there'll be a hole. And I think it's a 5 16 bolt you could use or whatever they're telling you to use. And you could shove it in there and there's a hole in the flywheel and that'll tell you when it's at top dead center. So it's a little bit of a pain in the ass to do. And then you just have to find out which cylinder is on which stroke. Um, Best way to do that, uh, look at the valves, find out on the on a C12, they alternate. I don't know which one's which without looking at it, but uh, you can have two intakes together and then two exhaust, like they rotate, not like on a normal motor where it would be intake exhaust, next cylinder, intake exhaust, intake exhaust. It's not like that on the, on the C12, so don't uh, get carried away with that. So just see which one's on the exhaust stroke. The exhaust stroke would be the rocker pushing down on the exhaust valves. So there's that. So I'm going to get the motor at top dead center where I need it. I'm going to replace injector one and I can adjust injector one and four is what the ones I was replacing. I showed you four. I'm gonna do one now. And uh, you can adjust them both at the same time. So I just need to find, according to this, one, three, five can be adjusted with cylinder one at compression stroke. So when cylinder one is not on compression stroke and it's at top dead center, I could adjust the other cylinders. So that's that. Hopefully that helps you. Um, like I said, I'm gonna adjust, I'm gonna put the injector in the next cylinder. And then after that, I'm going to set the uh, Jacob housing on there. So I'll just show you that it's in this other book. Break install. And you would just set that on top of there. I'll show it. And then these are the torque specs. And then to adjust it, you would also need the other book. This is the assembly book. Disassembly and assembly. And then this book here is systems, testings, and adjusting. So it tells you how to adjust the, the overhead, like the valves and everything like that. Don't know why they wouldn't put it in the same book. Obviously, it's so they could sell you a $100 book twice. Okay, so the turning tool's in there. Half-inch ratchet. And then I got a 5 16 bolt. Down there, inside the hole. Just pushed in. With that bolt in the hole, that means we're at top dead center cylinder one. And now I need to figure out if cylinder one is on the compression or the exhaust stroke. If it's on the compression stroke, uh, injector two, three, and I don't know about the back one. It could be adjusted, but I have it in the manual. Um, I need this on the exhaust stroke then. Injector one, four, and I think six can be adjusted. Um, but I need to adjust one and four because I changed those injectors. And I need the inch cylinder one on exhaust stroke, and then I can do that one. And that one. That one. Okay, I found it in the book. This is the slave piston lash. I'll zoom out so you can screenshot it that you need to know your engine serial number i might have to pull the j cover off they get the feeler gauge in there but i'm gonna check the two uh actually all four cylinders on uh the because i took the jake off as it goes for the jake goes on two cylinders so i'm gonna check them both so four and three and then one and two just so you could read it. And then it can 
continues there. So I'm gonna read this and then I'm gonna adjust it. Okay, I adjusted the valves. Um, yeah, adjusted the valves. I'll put in the, the lash and everything, but you're gonna, it's hard to explain. You have to read it and uh, I showed some of it on another video, but you're gonna have to check the intake and exhaust on different strokes pertaining to which one you're doing they're all different um, next I threw these uh, lower valve cover the Jake housing covers on and then we threw the Jake's on plug the wires in put one bolt two nuts these get tightened to 60 plus or minus 11 so I'm gonna do 70 this one's 45 and we're torquing them down. Next, we're gonna try to do the valve lash on the Jake housing. I've never done that before. Someone else did that when we did the head. So we learned that for the first time. Tossed the cover on. We put the plug back on the fuel rail on the back, and then we're gonna try and prime the fuel system and start it. Pull the turning tool out of the motor. Before we do that, so I'm doing 70 on these ones. Okay. Doesn't seem like a lot, but that's why you do the torque specs. So you could over tighten shit. That's not good. Double, triple check. Okay. Now I'm going to go back, read the book. I might have to pull these back off. It's not a big deal, but I gotta figure out where the valve lash on them is. And what exactly? I might just be able to check them. And if they're good, then I don't have to adjust them. Oh, well, these ones are like the valves. These ones have a flat head. So like the valves, then like the rockers. These ones look like. Allen or something, so that might be different. Okay, I had to pull the lower Jake housings off because I can't get in there. I have two feeler gauges because I don't have one big enough, but you put them together and make them work. And on the compression stroke, you can do one and three, which is fine. the hardest one to do. That one's too tight. Maybe not. 
I need point zero four. I got the point zero three in there. It's a thousandth. I'm gonna get a thousandth in there. I just think it's the fuel gauge just being funny because they're doubled. Come on. Okay. And if I do these, I have to rotate it again. And then check the other ones. 